Hey, Columbia Glider Dave here. So we just got back from the truck show. Uh, ran a couple loads to get out. I uh, loaded a uh, direct customer out of uh, Louisville Thursday. It's uh, delivered in uh, the Chicago area. It was uh, 330 miles, something like that. 1400 bucks. Pretty good load. Uh, I was going to pull a trade show or something because uh, we, we had those options out of there. But I want to head back east. Uh, so out of Chicago, I was able to pick up some uh, totes. Totes always pay well, but they're not paying what they used to uh, to come back to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania in last year's market was uh, $3 a mile for something like this, you know, hazmat. These totes aren't hazmat, it's, uh, it's inverted sugar. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny, the place where I picked up, if you saw the Super Bowl, uh, Anheuser-Busch was saying that uh, Coors uses uh, corn syrup, which is basically what inverted sugar in totes is, to make beer. Well, when I checked in, there was a load of corn syrup going to Anheuser-Busch. So I thought that was pretty funny. I don't know anything about brewing beer, but uh, you know I'm sure yeast needs sugar. And Budweiser more than likely uses just as much sugar in their product as uh, Coors does. So that's kind of nonsense, right? Well, I've done a couple oil analysis on my truck, and I can see that uh, fuel dilution was starting to come up. And uh, usually, from what people are saying, that's uh, from idling a lot or you're starting to have a, an injector stream. And I've got 860,000 miles on the truck. I can smell fuel in the exhaust. I lost prime a couple times, and the fuel dilution is just starting to show. You know, it's not flagged as uh, abnormal. I mean, it's flagged as abnormal, but not worrisome. So I think uh, that's the last load I'm gonna run uh, until I get this fixed, I'm gonna swing by uh, uh, Penn Diesel in Pennsylvania, uh, probably in uh, York, have them look at it. I, I had them order uh, reman injectors, that's what you do with these uh, these gliders, and the OEM reman injectors are about 350 a piece, so it's about 2100 for a six pack. And if I wind up doing them, uh, it's gonna be another thousand to put them in. I, I think it's time. I mean, uh, somebody suggested that it, I might just have a loose injector, but I mean, I can feel a little bit of a wobble in the engine, and I've got the balancer and damper, and that wobble is just starting to present itself. So I got to get this taken care of before it starts missing or something worse than uh, losing prime happens. So that's the story with the truck. I think it's a smart decision. Um, the truck also has a uh, pretty good uh, resale value because uh, they changed the rules again on gliders. Uh, places that make gliders can't make them in the, in, the, in the volumes and quantities that they used to. So, my truck, if you were to go to a dealership with this sort of miles in this condition, would probably retail for about 47000 so I think it may be time to get out of the glider and get into one of these uh, new trucks before the emission standards change again. Uh, I think it's probably a good idea. Uh, I'm looking at uh, you know getting into a 2019 or I don't know if the new emission standards start in 2020 or not. Uh, it sounds like it does. So that was part of the reason why I definitely wanted to make uh, this truck show because the trucks were going to be at the show, which they were. Uh, I didn't see any freight liners though. I walked around the whole show, so I don't know if Freightliner was not there. Western Star was there. Uh, as much as I want a DD-15, it's not enough room in the Cascadia, in my opinion. I've, I've driven one. I liked it. Uh, but if I'm going to do a new truck, I want a big bump. So the three trucks I was looking at was uh, first the Peterbilt Ultra Loft. The second truck was the Western Star, the 5800 uh, EX, XE, whatever it's called. And the third truck was uh, that 680. 
And I got to tell you, you swift drivers in, the, in that uh, in that Kenworth 680, man, I don't like that truck. Um, all the shelving drawers that you pull out, to me, they seem like Rubbermaid uh, trash cans. Very flimsy, just very low end for, for a name like uh, Kenworth. And if I did uh, Kenworth, it'd be the X15 Cummins. So that truck I immediately ruled out as an option. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about that truck. The Ultra Loft, I really, I really liked it. Uh, I mean, it looks good on the outside. Looks okay on the inside. I don't like the way the top bunk folds and those Peterbilts folds in half. So it makes like a like a weird shelf when you fold it up. And if you have a mattress in there, it just kind of pushes it up and out of the way. And didn't like that. So it looks like what I'm probably going to shoot for is a, uh, a Western Star 5800. I mean, it's a beautiful truck inside. It's like a hotel. It's, a, it's the biggest bunk uh, stock out there, uh, I believe, 82 in, at uh, 82 inches. And uh, like I said, it feels like a hotel room. It's got that those wood uh, wood drawers, place where you put the microwave. Looks nice. Just Everything seems put together right in that truck. Now, I don't really like the way it looks outside, but if you do certain things with it, like don't get the uh, chrome inserts on the side of the skirts, and just maybe put your company logo, you know, down the side of the skirts. Uh, to me, it looks pretty good. Now, the truck I saw out there had a, an APU, uh, a Dyna something or other, and they put the condenser, which is weird, it's got a honeycomb uh, insulation, you know, honeycomb pressed in between sheets of aluminum in the back wall. Um, so the guy put the, con the condenser underneath the cab, so it kind of bounces and almost hits the, uh, the drive shaft. I'm definitely getting an APU uh, when it's time to get the truck. Uh, it's just a matter of when I order it and stuff. But that to me doesn't look like a very good option. So I gotta figure out, I gotta start looking at the CR England trucks and the other trucks that might have APUs and, and see if they are putting it on the back wall. Didn't make sense to me. The dealership that did this, I believe, is out of Iowa, uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, it's not the Freightliner. I think there's a Western Star in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, but I don't think I would mount it below the uh, the cab. Uh, um, just got to figure out if it can be mounted to the, uh, to the back of the cab. I think it can. I think you just have to insert, uh, you know, put in some inserts or something that you can screw into. Shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, I like that truck, man. That's that's a beautiful truck. And I thought I was going to get a 13-speed. I've driven the uh, the 12-speed, the 12-speed automatic that they put in a DT12. And I've got friends that uh, are looking to do the same thing. They want the automatic, and they may talk me into getting an automatic. What do you guys think about that automatic, the guys that are driving it? My concern is... If I keep it to 800,000 miles, at some point it's going to fail. And I don't know if people are uh, able to repair those cost of effectively quite yet. I know the I've seen uh, the, the older styles of the automatics. When a XYZ shift or whatever it's called goes bad, they have problems and it's very expensive to replace. So I'm still on the fence about that. It was a great show. Uh, didn't see anything new. After about uh, four shows, there's not much new technology out there. I would definitely recommend going out there just to meet people. Uh, as far as technology goes, there's nothing really innovative or new uh, coming out lately. And next year, there won't be uh, any new trucks because the trucks come every two years. So I think Dallas, and they might be out there next year. They weren't out there uh, last year. I don't want to say last year. I mean next year. Uh, the one coming up here in the summer. So I may go to Dallas. I'm on the fence on that one there. Uh, what else? I don't know if you guys have ever done uh, escape rooms. I don't know if you know what that is. But uh, we got together as a Patriot Star group. And 
you show up at a place and they make uh, puzzles and stuff for you to figure out and you got to figure out how to open locks and different things uh, and there's a story being told and they usually give you about an hour to get out of the room so we got out of there in about uh, 52 minutes which was pretty good only used uh, two two uh, free clues usually if they give you clues there's penalties involved with that uh, when we made it through the uh, this one was uh, three rooms got out of the first room fairly quickly got a little hung up on a couple uh, clues in, in the bigger room uh, but as a group we did pretty good uh, Kenny and Elizabeth uh, the flat betters uh, we had I forget who all else was in the room but as a team we did pretty good which is interesting because at this point I don't get along with the uh, the flatbed guys I guess uh, they don't like the videos I do when I bust balls on uh, you know certain people so those type of videos can't do anymore uh, it's probably for the better you know there's some people I just I watch what they do and, and it rubs me the wrong way and if you've ever read the book the seven habits of highly effective people you can't say anything good about people you shouldn't say anything at all that's one of the uh, tips they give you in there and for me and my personality it's very difficult to follow through with that I'm just uh, I'm a fairly straight shooter I'm gonna give you my opinion whether you want it or not, in a lot of uh, situations, and that rubs a lot of people the wrong way. And that whole flatbed world is a uh, different, uh, different breed for sure. Uh, I was thinking about doing a flatbed, uh, but the way I am, I don't fit in. When I grew up, uh, I got thrown out of the house for different reasons. Uh, partly my fault and partly because of uh, the way my parents are and when I grew up in the uh, I wound up I moved into a friend's house and eventually junior sophomore junior senior year uh, I lived in a group home uh, and I was one of two athletes in that group so what happens is when everybody else is in a group for a different reason uh, that particular group the uh, majority of the kids that got thrown out of their house or, or, or uh, left on their own, uh, they had, uh, you know, drug problems and, and that sort of thing. So they kind of were able to, to relate amongst themselves. And I've always had that issue where because of the way I am, you know, I'm pretty much by myself. I'm a solo entity. Uh, I'm an introvert because of what happened when I was younger uh, by nature. And I know, you know, I do these videos and it doesn't look like that. Uh, and as a matter of fact, that's part of the reason why I'm, I've been doing these videos is to try and, and uh, get out of that mind frame and try and uh, get to know people and, and uh, develop friendships that mean something. Here's something. If you don't know anything about friendships and stuff like that, don't trust people. What do you call friends? You call them acquaintances, and that's that's the way I pretty much lived my life. Everybody was uh, an acquaintance, not a friend. And I'm trying to change that. So those are all uh, trust issues. Uh, you know, acquaintances, friends. Is there a difference? I'm trying to de develop friendships now. Uh, I've always kept to myself because of uh, my upbringing. Uh, you know, it's not fun being all by yourself and not feeling like anybody's in your corner. It's part of the reason why I'm over at Patriot Star. Uh, it's not working for a company. It's working for, for good people, uh, build relationships, uh, trying to get more. Oh, here's the thing. So a lot of the van guys left that were here uh, when rates dropped. Because uh, when, you, when you work as an owner operator and you work in spot market and the rates aren't right, it's very difficult to earn a living if you don't set yourself apart and if you make zero effort to set yourself apart you're gonna be running around for about what you can make at the you know the Cretes um, Swifts you know different companies like that you know dollar thirty dollar forty all miles um, 
So what I'm trying to do is, Kenny just moved the office, and I'm sure he's going to make uh, some announcement here at some point to Tennessee for, for a multitude of reasons. And once uh, the trucks get plated in Tennessee and things change and everything's uh, back to status quo, we're going to start looking for drivers again. And in order for me to be successful here in my business running spot market and preferred brokers, uh, pad wrap and logistics and stuff like that, we need more than uh, two or three trucks. Now, at this point of the game, because uh, the vans left, the guys that didn't want to do pad wrap and stuff like that, there's only a handful of us, only two that have uh, pads as far as I know, and the others have you know, a few bars and a few straps. But once we're played and everything's status quo, we're gonna make a push to get uh, more trucks over here. Now my goal is to get logistics trucks here, uh, but the platform side, seems to be doing really well and it's much easier to get platform guys to come over here from a Landstar from a Mercer especially Mercer you know rates at Mercer are really bad for the uh, platform side uh, you know Landstar you can do better uh, but what people running logistics vans probably don't know is in a situation here at Patriot Star I know you can do better than the van lines because I talk to the van lines you know, the guys that pull into in and out of trade shows. And the rates that they're running for stuff, uh, running stuff around is at or below what I'm doing. So I know there are uh, guys at van lines that could probably do better over here. And I know there's a bunch of guys at Landstar, especially Landstar. If you're one year into uh, running logistics type stuff and you haven't really made those, those big time connections with the really good uh, agents, you definitely can do better here than there. And for me to succeed and be profitable and do well with my business over Patriot Star, I need more than two logistics trucks uh, to work here. So when everything becomes status quo and we're plated out of Tennessee and everything's back to normal, we're gonna start, we're, we're gonna start hiring drivers. Uh, Kenny's got a stack like this of uh, applications and the thing about a stack like this is most of those guys, I don't know what percentage of them, but most of those guys aren't qualified. Uh, the reason they apply to a company like this is because uh, they, they've, they've got uh, confidence in themselves, whether founded or not, that allows them to, uh, to make changes. And that's, that's a big thing for people, you know? If you're really good at what you're doing, but you just want to stay where you're at, you're never going to get yourself in a better position. So the best of the best really should be looking, if you're on a Landstar or Mercer or something like that, should be looking to come to a Patriot Star or getting their own authority. And the thing is, if you're on a Landstar or Mercer and you're looking to go right to your own authority, I think you're missing a step. And I've talked about this in uh, other videos you really need to learn how to self-dispatch in the spot market and understand how uh, connections work with uh, preferred brokers that, you know, email blasts that are already set up somewhere else. Build those relationships before you get your own authority. Uh, I gave a connection to somebody uh, that has their own authority that otherwise would never have had that connection and they did really well on one load. Uh, and I learned something from that. You know, when you when you give somebody a connection, you got to be really careful who you give it to, uh, because you know they they could burn your connection to, to that uh, good paying load. You know, th those those loads that are out there. But uh, this particular individual did a really good job uh, for that broker, and I, th I think that reflects on us uh, when somebody does a really good job. But. Other than that, that would never, ever, ever in a million years ever happen. And why is that? Because you don't want to give your best, your best deals to other people because then you lose opportunities at revenue. So that should be kept you know, in your pocket. You don't want to share those kind of connections with other people. People get jealous. Uh, and it can be messy. 
you know? This particular person said something to someone and it blew up in their face, you know, because they were happy, they were excited about doing this particular load. So there was a lesson learned there. Don't don't share your connections with uh, even your best friends. Uh, it can backfire on you. Don't do it. That being said, it was a great truck show, and uh, we're back here in Pennsylvania. Going to have to spend $30, $3,200, something like that for injectors. I'll probably do a blow-by test and pull an ECM report to see... Uh, where the truck's at so I have this information when I sell the truck I'm thinking about doing a, uh, a lease purchase or an outright sale on this glider this truck is in phenomenal shape but I want to be able to run California if you'd be interested when everything becomes status quo Patriots start doing some sort of lease purchase or buy this glider outright uh, drop a message in the uh, contact uh, in the uh, comment section of this video and we'll keep you up to date on that Columbia Glider Day.